Welcome back to Maya 101. This is Michael. In this uh, part of the Maya 101 Fundamentals series, I thought we would do like a very simple modeling demo. Nothing crazy and fancy, just something really simple like here's a goal. We're going to use some tools and some shapes and things and model something simple. Um, hopefully you've already been practicing this on your own, just kind of modeling different shapes and things and trying out the tools. Like I mentioned in the last part of the series, I I would hope that you would go through my channel and kind of looking at videos over going over simple commands and tools and things and kind of getting a sense of how all these commands and tools work. So I thought for a, I mean like very simple beginner shape of something, we could make, say, a pencil. And I understand some of you might be like, oh boy, pencil, boring. And I get that. So what one thing I would recommend is always having lots of reference material. So having a pencil is, you know, relatively simple. Here's a picture of a pencil, for example. Uh, finding uh, images online for reference for different things. Also just having one in front of you, like I have a pencil here at my desk, for example, I can pick up and look at. So as far as this pencil goes, again, it shouldn't take a very long time because I don't want this to be, you know, hours long uh, for some sort of complex shape. It's kind of really quickly go through something all right, we're going to model. Here's here's a simple project. Uh, so here's a pencil here, and so uh, pencils are come in all different shapes and sizes. Like the one at my desk, for example, here is perfectly round, while the uh, traditional pencil that you typically see pictures of is more of uh, maybe uh, faceted surfaces. Let's see find another picture here. Here we go. You can kind of see the the lines here from the uh, kind of a faceted shape to the uh, shaft of the pencil itself. So I think that's the kind of pencil we're going to make, something that has that kind of traditional, I think I would say this is a six-sided cylinder or something like that, uh, that would create that shape. And then we have the point itself, of course, and then the eraser tip at the end. And once we get done with this, uh, we're kind of going through this, and I'll, I'll kind of call out what I'm doing. And again, it shouldn't take a super long time. Um, again, finding... Uh, multiple references, even something as simple as this pencil, I think is useful. Here's another. This is kind of a cool reference. You can get the tip and the eraser all kind of one little small picture here like this. So having, you know, a picture over here to use on the side, something that's really quick that you can reference. I'm actually going to put it over here on my other monitor so you might not see it yourself, but it's there. I might pop it back in every now and then just to, sh just to look at it again. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to model a pencil. Okay, so... Yeah, something simple should only hopefully take a few minutes. So first thing I'm do is create kind of a basic shape to follow that uh, cylinder shape. So I'll go to create polygon primitives cylinder. Okay, we're gonna model something. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this on its side. Now one quick, and as I do this, and I'm, I'm gonna call out what I'm doing. And so some things you maybe don't know, and maybe some things you do know. You know, for example, I'm gonna hold down the J key when I rotate. And that's gonna rotate it in. 15 degree uh, increments. So instead of it being a free form rotate, I can go down here over over to 90 degrees and the kind of let go of J, kind of snaps to a 90 degree angle there. Again, holding the J key. J is in Joy or Jacob or something like that. Okay. And what I tend to do when I'm working with cylinders, I'll do that, is I like to remove the sliced cap face. This cap default is always this kind of pizza pie slices. So over here in the channel box, I'll click where it says under inputs, poly cylinder one. This gives us these creation options. I'm going to go to subdivisions caps. And here's another handy tip. The middle mouse button is your friend. Definitely you want to use that middle mouse button a lot. And you want to get in the habit of it. So what you can do is you can click on the name subdivisions caps here. It's going to middle click and drag left and right out here in empty space. And you can see what's happening is I'm using that subdivisions caps uh, setting as a slider. So middle clicking and dragging and to the left takes it down to zero. To the right increases it higher than zero. But I want it to be zero. So I'm just clicking with my middle mouse button, drag to the left, make it zero. Same thing for the subdivisions axis. By default, they're 20. There's 20 facets going around this cylinder. Like I said before, the typical uh, pencil shape appears to be... Uh, I want to say six-sided. I might not even be right about that. Again, let me look at my, my picture here. We got one, two, 
three. I want to say there's three facing me here, so I'm assuming there's three on the other side too. So I'm, I'm going to say six. So six sided. So I'm going to take that subdivisions axis, middle click and drag to the left. And I can take that down to six, like this. So now we have a six sided cylinder. And if I'm wrong about this, if, you, if you're looking at your own pencil and you're like, this thing has eight sides. See, I'm looking at my own pencil and it's perfectly round. There's no, there's no facets on it. So I might be wrong about this. If it's eight, just can simply make it eight instead. But I'm pretty sure it's not eight. Would it be seven? I don't think so. We're going to keep it even numbers. I tend to try to keep even numbers. So I'm going to say six. There we go. And then I can scale it, you know, a good length. Depending on how accurate you want to be, if you want to like measure your pencil and make it exactly right, you can. The default units of measurement Maya uses are centimeters. So if you measure your pencil and it's you know 20 centimeters long, you're going to want 20 you know units long here in uh, Maya. That's what be, that would be 20 centimeters. But I'm just going to keep it. I'm just, I'm just going to eyeball it like this. As far as the width of the pencil, you can use this corner box here to scale that shape however you'd wish. We'll kind of just do something like this. Okay. And there we go. There's our kind of a base cylinder shape for our pencil. No big deal. So let's look at the tip. So let me bring this picture back here and let me zoom in a little bit. Again, reference is key. So obviously we are sharpening the pencil. It's it's cutting the pencil down to get to this tip here. And this tip is actually much more round than the six-sided shaft of the pencil, right? So we're going to transition from the six-sided cylinder into a more round cylinder coming down to a tip. Okay, that's a little more complicated than it might look. And depending on how uh, rugged you want the tip to be, you could do something like this where it's kind of this uh, not quite so perfectly sharpened look tip to it or keep it more simple as well. Move that over back to the side here. So what I'm going to do is right click and hold choose faces as my component. I'll grab that face and I'm going to extrude this face by holding down the shift key. It's a shortcut by the way. Hold down shift. You can extrude out like this. Or if you want to do the traditional route, you can go to edit mesh extrude. That also will extrude out like this. Let me pull that handle out. I'm going to press the R key for scale. I'll scale it down. Okay. So we're kind of getting that traditional shape and then I'm going to scale down to about this wide and I'm going to hold shift. I like, I like to do the hold shift method for extruding. I'm just going to extrude out again a little bit for my little lead pencil nib there. Kind of scale it down a little. Okay, we'll do something like this. And we'll come back to this, don't worry. So there we go, something like that. And then for the eraser, let me again pull back my, my reference here. So here's kind of a close-up view here. You kind of see it's got these little ridge details and things. It's good to see. This one doesn't have that. Let's see. This one does. I'm going to zoom in over here. There you go. You can kind of see this here. So we're going to have the pink eraser, of course. This kind of rounded, uh, perfectly round cylinder on the end, as well as our this metal cap here. I'll just get rid of that one. There we go. So this one, this one's a nice one here. This kind of metal one. You can kind of see all the ridges there. There. So let me show you what I'm going to do for those ridges. But I'm going to make a, instead of extruding off of the end of here, I'm actually going to make a new cylinder to pop on the end of the cylinder I currently have. So I'm going to go to, again, Create Polygon Primitives Cylinder. Here we go, make a new cylinder. Move it over here. Hold that J key with Rotate to rotate it to 90 degrees like this. And take those caps down to zero. I like to get rid of those pizza caps. And then I'll kind of, again, I'm kind of just eyeballing this. I'm not worried about being too exact right now. And as far as the scale this way, I'll make it so it's just barely, just barely fitting over the end, something like this. And then as far as the subdivision's axis, 20 is a little high. I'll lower this down a little, maybe 12. And again, I like to keep even numbers. I don't like to have like odd odd numbers in the subdivisions axis. So I have sub, subdivisions, I ah, can't say that, subdivisions axis of 12 and approximately this length. Might even be too long, that's okay though. Something like that. Okay, so I'm going to grab both faces on the other Again, I, I kind of do this quickly, so every now and then you might see me just instinctively do it. 
right clicking and holding and choosing faces as my component mode. I'll hold shift and click on that face and I have both these faces selected at the same time. And I'm going to bevel them. I'll go to edit mesh, bevel, get this little box here to help us out. I'm going to increase my segments to up to two and I'll adjust my fraction down. Now this fraction is very finicky you'll see. So another handy shortcut or handy trick, hold down the control key or potentially command on a Mac. I don't have a Mac in front of me so I might be wrong about that. It might be control on a Mac too. But hold down command or control and then click and drag on this fraction number. You can see we get a little bit more of a fine-tuned uh, control over it. So I'll do something like this. So my fraction is 0 0.08 and the segments of two. Anytime I'm giving you numbers like that, don't worry about it too much. You're mostly you're kind of looking at what I'm the result I'm getting and try to match it something similar. It's not as important to get the exact same numbers I'm getting. That's not the important part. Okay, so as far as like all those little ridges that we see in the picture, bring it back here. So we have these ridges going around the tip. We also have these kind of indented uh, pokes here. And then we have these uh, perpendicular ridges going through here. So I will tell you that what we would normally do in a real situation like this, if I was really tasked with making a pencil for a client or for my uh, boss at work or something like this, I wouldn't worry about modeling this stuff. This stuff I can easily get away with using texturing. Now we haven't talked about texturing and you know you might have seen some stuff about texturing on my channel or other channels and we're definitely going to talk about texturing in this uh, playlist. But this is where texturing would come in, like really micro details. Like if you're looking at, for example, again, there's like this, these wood patterns, you know, the yellow of the shaft, the green or the metal of the cap here that we're seeing, there's all those colors and the way it looks like wood or it looks like metal or it looks like uh, rubber or whatever it might be, all that comes through in texturing. So we're not worrying about all that stuff so much. Now these ridge details, we definitely could model them and I, and I will just to show you. But what I would normally do in real life is I would not worry about modeling that stuff as much and I would use texturing to achieve this. But we haven't talked about that yet, so we're going to go ahead and do some of this anyway. So pull this back over here. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put in a ridge. So I'll go to uh, Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop. Okay, I can click and drag on an edge like this and you'll see the dotted line appear. So I'm going to click and drag and put one here. Oh, I still have my setting on. Let me undo that actually and show you that. If we go to Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop Options. I'm just going to edit or actually reset tool button over here. It just turns off that insert with edge flow. I don't, I don't actually want that for this particular uh, project. So turn that little checkbox off. Everything else is the same though. Right, click and drag and then let go. And there we go, inserts that edge loop. In this case, let's see, I'm looking at the picture again, and I see like one, two, three of these kind of ridges. So I'll make another, click and drag another one, and then click and drag another one. So now we have three. Okay, so if I double click an edge, it'll select the entire loop going all the way around. So hold shift and double click this edge. It'll add that, hold shift, double click that edge, adds it as well. So I have all three edge loops selected. So I'll go to Edit Mesh, bevel. Okay, so now we've beveled all three of those edge loops. You can see here we have the fraction control for how wide of a uh, segment that we're getting here. We can add more segments as well. So let's say I go up to two, or sorry, three in this case. So kind of, kind of pictures have three groups of four edge loops. See that? So there's four edge loops here, four edge loops here, four edge loops there. So I've increased my fraction, or, or actually uh, adjusted my fraction, I've increased my segments to three. And then what I can do is hold down, right click and drag and down the faces, I can click on, click on this face, hold shift again and double click on the face next to it. And that's gonna select that face loop all the way around. Shift, click that one, shift, double click that one. Shift, click that one, shift, double click that one. So now I have these three rows of faces selected. I can hold press R for scale and I can click and drag. Oop, a little finicky again, middle mouse button, I can click and drag out here and it doesn't actually affect, it does actually affect the scale. I don't have to click on the handle itself. 
So even if I can't see the handle, I can click on it. See, it, it glows. They, they turn yellow when you have those handles selected. See that? So select this handle here, middle click and drag, and it will scale that handle. So again, middle click and drag is your, is your friend. There we go. So now we kind of get these ridges. See that? And mine a little bit uh, off center. You know, again, not a big deal. I can select and kind of move them as a group to kind of uh, get those centered there like that. Yeah. And so that's kind of what we would do. We can kind of do that and you look again at the picture. We can do it again over here. Now for these uh, ones going the other way, that's a little bit different. We can look at that later. But let me go ahead and just kind of repeat these steps for another set of three ridges on this end. So again, I'll go to Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop. I'll put one here, put one there, and put one there. Just kind of eyeballing it, not worrying about being too exact right now. I'll grab them all, make sure I don't select the wrong thing. Because if you press the 4 key, you can actually look through the object. It is possible to select an edge on the back side of a model. Press the 5 key to go back to shade it. So I could select edges through a model. So if you gotta be careful not to select edges that you can't see. You wanna make sure you're, you know exactly what you're selecting. With these three selected, I'll again go to Edit Mesh and Bevel. Okay, adjust my, my fraction, increase my segments up to three. There we go. So again, I have my three sets of four edges. Now, grab those middle loops. Again, I'll select this face, shift, double click the face next to it. Hold shift, select that face, shift, double click, shift that face, shift, double click that face. And again, I can click this square handle here. Don't forget middle mouse click and drag. And you want to try to match, you know, similar to the scale I have over there. So it's not like a crazy different shape. Uh, okay. So you might notice something like this, where we're getting some uh, kind of this weird edge hardening. We're going to fix that later, don't worry. Alrighty, so now looking back at my reference, I got, I'm looking at this silver one. And again, my reference is underneath my my there. So then we can look at this and kind of adjust our proportions. So if I wanted to make this smaller or shorter, I can grab all these points and kind of move it around. Adjust that overall shape of the cap be a little more proportionate to what I'm seeing in my pictures. Okay. So what we're seeing here as far as these edges is whenever you're doing modeling of things, this will happen where you'll need to soften or harden the edges that you're looking at. So if I go to, if I select this and go to uh, Mesh Display, we have Harden Edge and Soften Edge. If you click on Harden, we'll get this, where every, all the edges become crisp. If I click on it and go to Mesh Display Soften Edge, they all become soft. Now what you can do, and we actually, you notice over here also I have a long list of history now because I've added all these insert edge loops and extrudes and bevels and all these different things. I'm going to delete history just to kind of clear my list out. And I'll go, again, go to Mesh Display, Soften Edge. And if I click on Soften Edge here, we'll have an angle percentage or a threshold. So if I click on that angle, again, middle mouse click and drag to the left, my angle percentage is going down. And as it hits around 45 degrees or so, there we go, and then we get something like this. So now the angles or the edges that have uh, this low threshold get hardened while the rest of them remain soft. So now we can have more of a softened cylinder here in the middle while these ridges have kind of a hardened look to them. So you can kind of use this this angle threshold. Again, you can middle click and drag, or and hold control and middle click and drag. Again, you get more, a little bit more um, sensitivity to it. Actually, go the other way. Okay. And if I decide, you know, what, I want, I want these edges to be soft. I can select those edge loops example and go to mesh display soften edge there we go so now only the edges these two edges are hard while these two edges are going to be soft 
Don't forget the G key. The G key will redo the last command I did, which was soften edge. There we go. So now the outer edges of this ridge are hardened, and the inner two edges are softened to get a little bit more of that ridge effect. Okay, so as far as the perpendicular ridges, I would find it, again, again, like I said earlier, I would do all this stuff in texturing, but if I wasn't doing it in texturing, I would be wanting to do some advanced stuff to kind of bake details and all these different things that we'll talk about in the later, <laughs> later classes. Uh, but what I would do probably is like, for example, I might even grab a little cylinder, another cylinder and scale it down real small. I'll rotate it 90 degrees. And do something like this. Feel free to just watch for a second. Kind of see what I'm doing. Kind of inserting it in there like this. See that? And then I can duplicate it. And just keep going around the pencil to add these, all these little small ridges going perpendicular to the other ridges that we have. But again, I would do this realistically with textures. So I'm actually just going to leave it blank. I'm not going to worry about uh, kind of filling that in. But we do have these ridges here though. And you notice I'm not, I have mine aren't exactly uh, the same like width over here compared to this one. If you want to adjust that, you definitely can. Um, I can grab just a box around all this stuff. Again, if you look at the back side, make sure you grab it all. And I, can, I can move them all together like so. And kind of put them next to each other and kind of compare them and so on. I want to scale them in a little bit, I can do that and pull them back over here. And just different things you can do, just grabbing groups of vertices. I went back to object mode by right clicking and holding and clicking on the object mode option over here. Okay. There we go, kind of zoom out if I need to. You know, looking, looking at it as a whole, you might say, uh, maybe it needs to be longer. All these little small changes you can make, you can pull these down a little bit to make this longer, all sorts of little stuff you can do. Okay, and as for the eraser, make another cylinder. I can click this little cylinder button here, move it over here, rotate it 90 degrees by holding the J key. And once again, I'll take get rid of the pie, uh, pizza pie faces, scale this in, I'll just kind of stick it into the back end of this piece. And then I'll right click and hold, choose faces, I'll grab this face, and I'm going to bevel it. Edit mesh, bevel. We can increase the segments a couple times, adjust the fraction to kind of get this rounded surface, this rounded corner. There we go. Supposed to be like a brand new eraser, never been used. All right. So now we have. Well, it kind of looks like a pencil. I'm going to remove, remove the grid there, just so it's a little easier to see. Okay. So we're not done yet. Um, I want to show you a couple more things. If I select the pencil, you know, remember we have these uh, kind of a six-sided ridged uh, surface of the, of the um, shaft of the pencil, but then the sharpened end over here should be more round, right? So what I something I do all the time is I'll use the, the three key, press the three key, and it's going to soften or smooth the model. Press the one key, it goes back to the way it was. So three. One, three, one. If you do two, you're going to get this, which is a, a smooth model with a wireframe showing you the unsmooth model. So it's like kind of like both. So pressing the one key, this is the actual model. We'll make sure that's clear. This is the actual model. Press the three key, gives you this smooth look. Now what this smooth look is called is smooth mesh preview. That's what this three key button displays. It's the smooth mesh preview. One key. Three key. So the one key is the actual model. Okay, make sure that's clear too. Three is giving you a preview of what will happen after you were to smooth the model. Okay. So I want to show you over here just real quick. I'll bring up a cube just for the sake of um, demonstration. And I'll duplicate this cube a couple times. So I'm going to show you three different cubes here. I'm going to do a smooth mesh preview for all three. But first of all, this middle cube, I'm going to bevel. I'll go to Edit Mesh Bevel, and this is a, a watching point. So I'll bevel this with a fraction of that like this. Okay, and now this one over here, I'll bevel again, Edit Mesh Bevel, and this time I'll add a segment. 
and increase the diffraction, something like this. I'll go ahead and turn on the wireframe on shader just so you can see the difference. So here is a cube that's not beveled at all. Here's a beveled cube, has a little bit of a bevel to it. And this one has another beveled cube with additional segment. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of the wireframe on shaded view. I'm going to select all three and press the three key. So this is the smooth mesh preview result. After pressing three, the cube becomes a sphere, essentially. The beveled cube becomes kind of a rounded box, while the beveled cube with additional segments is rounded, but not as round. So the more your bevel has segments, and we can adjust the segments after the fact here, I can increase this even more, adjust the fraction. So here again, with press the one key, that's your actual model, the one key. You see how many segments I have, lots of segments here. I have four segments with a small fraction. Press the three key to give it a smooth mesh preview, and it kind of maintains that shape. You can see that go back and forth between one and three. It doesn't change a whole lot. This one over here, though, one and three, it changes quite a bit. You know, that one key shows you, again, the actual model with the bevel. Press three, and it kind of gives you a smooth mesh preview, and it's a bit pillowy, yeah? Well, over here, it's a very drastic change from one to three. With no bevel at all, a cube becomes a sphere, essentially. So I wanted to show you that because what we do use the smooth mesh preview quite a bit, or at least I do, in the work that I do. So again, go back to my pencil and press three. You'll notice it kind of melts, right? So I'm going to show you a little bit of what I would do to make the smooth mesh preview better. So first of all, this face that is hidden behind the cap, we can delete it. So I right-click and hold and choose faces. And press the four key and click on that hidden face and press delete. And that's going to remove that face. Go back to object mode. You can see there now it's just a hole there. But because we're again we're covering it with this cap, that's okay. So when I press the three key, you'll notice it doesn't become this uh, globby mess over here. It actually just kind of smooths out like this. Okay. Back over here, press the three key. Everything kind of becomes, we kind of lose a lot of the shape. So that's when that beveling comes in. So if you remember, we have this kind of ridged, six-sided shaft, and then it transitions to a more rounded, uh, sharpened edge. So I'm going to grab these edges here on the shaft of the pencil, and I'll go ahead and bevel those. I'm not going to bevel these, just these over here. Edit mesh, bevel. I can increase the segments to one, and adjust that fraction down a little bit, something like this. Press three. Okay, not, not quite what we want yet, but we're getting closer. Okay, press the one key. And then I'm going to go over here. And you notice we have these kind of triangular shapes here. Let's try that. Some of this stuff is going to be kind of trial and error. Because, again, my videos for the, for, I, I treat this just like I would a classroom. Where I'm not going to edit out any mistakes, essentially. So if I do make a mistake, I'll, I'll tell you. The most of the, the stuff that I would edit out is if, I just really go way down a rabbit hole that doesn't go anywhere for some reason. I might edit that out. I can delete those kind of triangular edges. Actually, that's a good, bring, good point. Let me undo that. So when I have these edges selected, if I press delete, I want you to notice in vertex mode, those vertices are still there. You see that? So let me undo that. Make sure I'm in edge mode. So with these edges selected, I need to hold control or command and then press delete. And that's going to remove the vertices too. So that's a, that's a handy thing. So you typically want to remove those vertices whenever you're deleting edges. You don't want them to hang around. So Command or Control Delete will remove those extra vertices. So press the three key now. It looks like I missed one. Go down here. Control Delete. Press three. There we go. So it's not quite so weird looking over here as it was. So we see down here toward this end, we're getting that kind of ridged look of the pencil that I'm going for. But down this here, that, that ridge kind of melts away to this. So press the one key again, make sure it's selected. And I'm going to add a another edge loop around the pencil here toward this tip. So again, mesh tools, insert edge loop, click and drag. You'll see here I have this line up here, put it right there. Now you'll notice if I try and do it over here on this side, and click and drag, it doesn't work doesn't work. So you have to do it on this side over here. And the reason why is because we are dealing with another concept We're called ingons. Ingons. And I'll put that on the screen there. Ingons. 
So again, another, again, we're kind of showing you different concepts and things that again, go with a basics class. And anytime you're trying to model something, these are important things to know. That's why I'm still going over different topics and things as we're doing this modeling demo, things I haven't talked about. So quads, okay, the word quad is referring to a four-sided face. So all these faces over here are four-sided. A triangle is, as you might expect, a triangle. Let me just bring up a, a plane to show this. This plane is made up of a whole bunch of quads. You'll see that. I'm going to decrease the subdivisions. There we go. Now it's just one big quad. Now if I were to cut a line from one point to another, now we have two triangles, right? Okay, easy enough. Now if I were to grab this edge and say extrude it over here, these are two quads because this has four sides and this has four sides. But if I were to delete this edge, now this face has one, two, three, four, five, six sides. That is no longer a quad. It's not a triangle. It is an ingon, where in represents a number. That's not three or four. <laughs> so any number higher than four on a face, that is an ingon. And Maya doesn't really like ingons that much. Now you can have them, just like I have them down here. It's not breaking anything, but if I were to try to do something like insert edge loop, but under mesh tools, insert edge loop, I can do it over here because these are all quads. Maya likes quads. But if I try to do it over here though, it won't because these are not quads. This face here has one, two, three, four, five, six, six sides. So it's not going to allow that insert edge loop to work because it's not quads. So it's important to know that. You want to try to you try to maintain quads as much as you can. Now I'm going from a transition from this uh, faceted surface to a rounded surface. So there's a little bit of a weirdness happening here, but it, we're just working on it. All right, so now we're getting closer. So uh, again, because I inserted that one edge loop through here, press the three key, that smooth mesh preview, we're kind of getting closer to where we want to be. So the, the smooth mesh preview is giving you this uh, shape that we're going to be using for different reasons. Uh, like if you're familiar, if you're interested in getting into say video game work, the smooth mesh preview uh, geometry it will be used for what's called a high resolution mesh for baking detail in games and if you don't know what all that means that's okay if you're wanting to get more into like films like Pixar stuff then they use a lot of uh, what they call subdivisional modeling which is the same idea here that we're doing they soften their edges and their their models by pressing that three key essentially to kind of create these shapes and things and understanding how the beveling affects that is important. Okay. All right. So we're not really getting much separation here from the tip where the lead would be compared to the wood. Press the one key again. So I'm going to just grab these edge loop down here and I'll bevel that. Edit mesh bevel. Just a fraction. Might add a segment there. Kind of get more of a division. So press the three key again. Now we're kind of getting a little bit of a shape differenti differentiation there. Press the one key. Again, I'm going to grab this edge loop and kind of move it and scale it a bit. Press the three key again. Kind of get see the difference that we're getting. again now if you want this tip to kind of have this sharp uh, faceted look to it that's going to require that beveling to happen again so say if I want to make like a, an odd you know like I'm just going to rotate this face a little bit so it's not quite so square give it a bevel on the end bevel is your friend so there we go something like that for example so lots of things we can do so at this point, I mean, there's more we could do, but I want to keep this relatively simple if I can, even though I'm still going over new concepts, such as the subdivisional modeling or the, the smooth mesh preview. And so again, I would drive this further with like this transition from the uh, handle, if you will, of the pencil to the wooden color here to the lead color there with textures. And we, if we get to textures today, that'd be great. If not, I'll try to talk, touch on it on the next video that I record for this lesson, this uh, playlist. I'm already going, at least as far as my recording goes, I've already recorded half an hour and just talking about this little pencil, but uh, that's okay though. 
Okay, so now, yeah, I'm, I'm relatively happy with this, just to, I can delete this thing. And then we have this, I can press the three key for this too. We kind of see that what we get with those ridges and so on. One key versus three key. Okay. And then for this eraser tip, if I press the three key, this becomes kind of almost like a, a rounded end over here. But again, because that face that's inside here can be deleted. Just press the four key and that face there that we can't see because it's being hidden, I delete it. Go back to object mode and press three. It doesn't become rounded like that. There we go. So yeah, I'll call that done as far as uh, the modeling of this pencil. And we can, we can play with it some more, but for the sake of this video, I think that's pretty good. So yeah, I mean, a little bit more um, complex than maybe you thought at first, a little bit more going on, just because I wanted to start introducing these concepts for of the smooth mesh preview. Again, press the one key, goes back to the mesh, press the three key back and forth uh, between those, one and three, one and three. Okay, because these are things I feel like are important that you need to know for modeling, especially uh, going forward, because eventually we're going to get into texturing, and if I continue with this Maya 101 course, we might even branch out into, say, texturing and so on with different programs such as Substance Painter and things like this. Um, so yeah, that's, that's way down the road, though. So again, textures can do a lot, like for example, um, I must have closed my reference picture, but let me bring it back up real quick. There we go, like these dimples here. You could model those in, but again, it's, when you're talking about a prop that's so small, uh, you might can get away with just using textures. That becomes another point too when dealing with textures or versus modeling, uh, depending on your audience, right? So let's say for example, you're working on a video game or a film and they need a pencil for whatever reason. Let's say there's like an office environment. All right, so you make a pencil prop. So how is that pencil prop going to be used? Is it going to just simply be in the background laying on a desk and it's never close to the camera, right? Well, then the pencil can be relatively simple. We don't need to go into a ton of detail. However, if we're going to have a zoomed in shot of someone writing with the pencil, like a zoomed in on their hand as they write with the pencil, then that pencil should be much more detailed because now we're up close to it and we can see a lot more detail to it. So yeah, in that case, maybe I would punch in this little dimple here to uh, create that little hole in the in the side of this metal clamp. So different, depending on how a model is going to be used is how you would create it. That's a big part of it. Okay. Well, you know what? I said last week that we are going to do a modeling demo. Uh, last week. I said last lesson that we were going to do a modeling demo this time. And I think we did in about a half hour or so. I think that's about what I, we have time for. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut this one off. But hopefully you found this useful. Let me bring up the wireframe on Shaded and kind of see what we ended up with here as far as the wireframe goes. I can select it, press 1. Here's the base model. There you go. Select everything, press the 3 key. It'll be a smooth mesh preview model. So how about we stop there. So I definitely would recommend, you know, as far as homework goes, again, you don't have to send me anything, but feel free to, you know, comment if you have uh, links or something you want to show me. But, um, yeah, try modeling something, even as simple as a pencil. You, know, you can learn a lot of things about how to create it. Practice that uh, smooth mesh preview and using beveling to control the, the sharpness of your edges. That's a big deal. Okay, going forward. And so it's, it takes practice, too. You're not just going to be automatically knowing how how much bevel is giving going to give you so soft of an edge, that kind of thing. So practice that as well. Um, and just kind of, yeah, what I would, I would just like look around your house or your apartment or wherever you live and kind of pick out something small, you know, even like a flash drive or something like that. And just try to model it and see how, how you do. Uh, continue watching the more tool-focused videos on the channel so you can kind of learn more about each individual command and tool as we go. Uh, and yeah, I think you'll you'll do well. So next video, I think we're going to look forward to starting the, t the conversation about textures. So I'm looking forward to talking about that. All right, guys, hope you are doing well, and I will talk to you next time.